We're trapped between the third and the fourth industrial revolution. We're going through this massive wave of technology-driven change. Back in 1750, you had two and a half generations to absorb the change of something like the steam engine. And now you're going to have to absorb four or five different paradigm shifts within a single generation. Tech skills depreciate. Social skills appreciate. We're not acting like that. If we're going to have to learn and adapt for life, we have to connect to that motivational driver. And I think that fuel source is purpose. Heather McGowan is my go-to person for the future of work. There are a lot of mirages out there, but Heather is the oasis. Uh, she's the real deal. What makes her unique is her ability to convey her ideas through both words and visuals. And the combination of the two are really powerful. We're going from a white majority to soon will be a white minority. From Christianity to plurality of religions. From although we've been predominantly living in cities, we have more of a rural mindset. It's becoming ideology over geography. You may have more in common with your community online than you have with your next door neighbor. These digital flows are reshaping our world. Flows of information, flows of knowledge, it's also flows of community. Humans are under a tremendous amount of stress. In the past, we learned once in order to work. Now we must work in order to learn continuously. It's about adaptability. Not that long ago, we all lived in the same town. We born, lived, and died there. Now we spend half of our time and mental energy somewhere other than where we physically are. So where are you from becomes a really interesting question. It used to be the only thing you did was survive. It looked like this. Education, career, retire. You went to school in the first third of your life, got on the career ladder, you collected a pension, and by design you died a year later. You were successful there if they codified and transferred the right skills into you to get you your first job and get you off on that ladder. Now it looks more like this. Life expectancy is not 90, but it will be soon. Education becomes learning. Career becomes leverage of that learning. And retirement really becomes a reality of longevity. We never saved for or planned for a 30-year retirement. I've relied on Heather McGowan to assemble, synthesize, demystify very complex information and it always provides a path to value-creating action. She's smart and she's real. We ask these ridiculous questions. What do you want to be when you grow up? That is a ridiculous question. This number is probably wrong. Now I've heard it's a third. It doesn't matter. 57% of statistics are made up. A lot of the jobs don't exist yet. And those that do, half the work within them is going to be automated. So why limit somebody's potential by making them imagine a future self and then work towards it? You're asking somebody to pick a future based on the limited amount of things they've been exposed to and then myopically focus on it as the world is changing rapidly around them. So we're calcifying somebody's mindset and identity around an expression of skills and knowledge at a moment in time and I think that's dangerous. We keep lunging at skills, like if you just learn coding, if you just learn this, you'll be robot proof. It's not about just downloading new skills into people. We're humans first. If I handed you guys a phone without an address book in it, how many people could you call? You're already part cyborg. You've outsourced that part of your brain. So when they talk about us merging with technology, we're already doing it. How do we navigate in this world? I am very optimistic about the future work. We can do anything. Thank you very much.